Hey, today we do the color sketch of Daisy. Okay, so this is the finished picture, but before we get here, we have a little bit more to do. Let's get our paper ready. And pencil. And... So... Uh, let's start with the back. Find my way around a little bit. Get the head. And keep remembering she's looking around. I like to put a couple of dots where the eyes are, a couple of dots where the nose is. Oh, that's my hair, sorry. And then those um, very, very long ears. Daisy has lovely long ears. As we saw in the pencil sketch. So I basically start the same way I do the pencil sketch, only much lighter. Uh, there's going to be mostly an aquarelle wash. I don't want to... I want it to be very light. I'm just trying to figure out... I'm just trying to figure out where the lines go and I don't mind if they show a little bit. And then, let's do the neck and shoulders, back. Mm. I think I got most of it. Now, draw where the belly goes, although in this painting, I do not plan to have the belly shown. It's, it's going to be a long landscape-like painting, but I just need to know where it goes, okay? Okay, so this is about the shape I plan to do. Mm. out and get my brushes and we'll do a very thin careful first coat I plan to put another coat on top of this and now we we'll start with like a this is a, a bay a brown horse so I like to start with a, a lighter and a bit of an orangey color as you can see um, Use a, a large brush so I don't get these little brush strokes, but I get a nice field, nice, everything's the same color. And then uh, this would be the base, and then, and then I go darker on top, and little dark, darkish purple for the tail. I like to uh, mix my blacks and instead of using black straight out of a tube. So my, I usually use this sort of uh, purple as the first coat for black. If you if you make it just a big black blob, then it's just too heavy. So I always like to have a color underneath. Same as with the brown, really. Now. Tipping in the lighter bits, I mean the darker bits, the shady bits. And the light is coming from the right. And as she turns her head, her forehead is really in the shadows a bit. Not quite as much as the neck. We'll use a much darker color for the neck. And just keep some more of the purple and around the eyes because horses have black skin and so it's always dark around the eyes she has lovely ears I think 
with Daisy, her ears are really quite spectacular, you might say. So, I like to give a little bit of shape to the face, but the paint is still wet, so it's sort of disappearing, so... Uh, let's do the tail and leave the head to dry a little bit before I add more detail to it. A nice solid dark color now. Getting close to what her real color is going to be. It's darker here, so I'm starting dark. The shoulder has these muscles, so you get a little bit of a striped effect. And then I'm going to fill in the neck. That's, apart from the dark points, that's going to be the darkest bit. All in the shade. So I'm, I'm going to give that some real, quite massively dark color. And then it will flow into the paint in the shoulder. That's the beauty of um, watercolors. They keep flowing into each other. And, and also it's annoying because you have to really wait sometimes until it's dry before you can continue if you don't want it flowing together but it is beautiful it's beautiful when it all flows into each other so let that dry a little bit in the back it was a bit of a dark I have the sketch in front of me you can't see it but um, I have the shaded sketch in front of me so I know very well where the colors are and how dark they are and then I've got a picture which shows the colors for me as a reference uh, one of the photos I made that is dry so I can add some more details there okay I had to wait a little bit until it was dry and now we can finish it off. Oh, that was too much. So I'll just put a bit of tissue on top of it and get a little bit of the paint and then I paint with a brush that's mostly water with a little bit of color and fill in the nose where it's really dark in the mouth. And then I can use the dark paint around the eyes, where the dark skin always shows, and by the ears. Bit of detail by the nose. A little hint of the manes, and then I need to do the tail a little bit. Oh, the eyelashes. bit of a forelock, give that a very light in the tail. Because a lot of the brown is bled into the tail and it doesn't matter, it gives more depth. That's all fine. Just color mixing the way uh, watercolor does. And the nose needs a bridge of the nose needs to be a bit darker. And then add a little bit by the eyes. So I'll put a little bit of color inside the eye. I'm having a finer brush now. Because now I'm doing the detail work. Getting a bit of white to do a spot on the head. And I'm going to fill in the eyes. Try to leave a little spot of light in there just to give a bit of depth to the eye. And because white dries up dark, I have to redo the spot on her head. And then I'll 
I'll do one tiny little tip for the light that hits the eye later on. There we go. With a bit more detail in the nose and mouth. No shadow, but I don't want to mess around too much with it. It's finally dry enough that I can do that detail of the bridge of the nose that I've been wanting to do. But I can't make it too dark, because the, the neck behind it has to be darker. Sign it. Mm. Leave it alone. Don't mess around with the watercolor too much. This is good. Okay. Did you like it? Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you loved it. Bye bye.